me introduce you to uh, Robbie Adair. Robbie and I met like a year ago on a, in an airport. In an airport, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in Portugal, of all places. Um, but in any case, Robbie is the CEO of OS Training and the Media A Team that specializes in training of web and media applications. Uh, and media strategies for clients. She speaks at many tech conferences around the world about topics such as web development, website application development, AR, media content creation, and more. She especially loves seeing that aha moment in people's eyes in her sessions and workshops. I love that aha moment as a speaker. You always know when you make an impact. I love the aha. Um, OS Training has had over 100,000 students take their online training courses in web development and has an explained book series that is used in the classroom by various high schools and universities. And you can learn more by uh, visiting their websites at ostraining.com, mediateam.com, or you can just find Robbie Adair. Yes. Dot com and learn all about it. So without any further ado, let me get out of the way here and let me let Robbie present to you all. Okay. I'm gonna Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. I was saying after we had I mean, gorgeous uh, bagels and pastries this morning, so lots of carbs. And then we had big sandwiches and lots of bread. I was like, they're all going to go to sleep. About 10 minutes into this, it's just the carb coma is going to hit, and you're going to be sound asleep. I hope not. But um, so uh, thank you for joining us today. Wow, standing room. I love it. Sorry you're having to stand, though. Apologies. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about today is using AI to speed up your WordPress development. And by the way, I did realize, because someone came to me and they're like, but I'm kind of new. And I was like, wait, I don't mean you have to be a developer for this. I mean web development in general, like creating a whole website for a client. Okay, So we're going to be talking about not only the code, but actually just creating the website. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about all of that in here. Um, I'm going to talk about several different tools. I'm not going to concentrate on one. There are a ton of tools. And the thing about AI is it is just <laughs> every day. If you're trying to keep up with AI news right now, it is like drinking from a fire hose. It is insane. It is insane. I follow like three or four podcasts and like every day I listen and I'm just like, oh my, my mind's blown every day. It's, it's really amazing. And, and uh, I, I was just speaking with this lady up here. I was like, you know, there, sometimes people are like, oh, AI is going to destroy the world and it's the end of everything or it's going to take all these jobs. It's new. It is a new technology, but it is still created by humans. It's it's training. It's learning comes from humans. So we're not we're not in a sci-fi movie just yet, you guys. But you know, it's good to stay on top of things and see what it can do, and what it can't do. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about overall tool sets and what you can do. Uh, I've got my Twitter on here. Obviously, if you're going to tweet, also hashtag this wonderful event we've got going on here today. Um, over here on the left, I want to show you, because you'll see throughout my presentation, the imagery, imagery that I did in here, I used AI to produce this imagery. And what I wanted to share with you is, and this was when uh, Firefly was in beta, it's alpha beta now, but um, it's, I love Adobe Firefly, it's fantastic. But what I want you to know is, what did I use to prompt this? So what I asked Adobe's Firefly is, please give me the back of a female web developer at a computer wearing a headset with a microphone. And on the computer screen, you can see AI tools building a website, futuristic hyperrealism. The futuristic hyperrealism is style I'm asking for, okay? Learning how to build your prompts is going to get you better results from AI, from any type, whether you're talking chat GPT, whether you're talking imagery, you are going to have to get better. That's why there's a whole new job role called prompt engineer now. I mean, it's amazing. I actually have a friend, she's in research and she was just, she was like, oh, this is going to put me out of a job. They're just going to use AI and they're just going to use the AI to get all my research that I do right now. And I was like, no, I said, better yet, you just learn how to use these tools. You learn how to build great prompts to get, you know how to research. So you actually know the prompts in your head. You're just doing it with your hands. You learn how to do this. And now you can call yourself the prompt engineer instead of a researcher and charge more money. And she was, she was like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> So a little, bit of, a little bit about me, and I was very glad that they, we started a few minutes early because I am terrible about running over. I am really working on that. I try real hard now to end on time and give you time for questions. Uh, so I'll be really quick. I do have a personal website. I call this my redheaded stepchild because I never update it. Sorry. I'm going to get to that one year. And then Media A Team is the agency I've had now for last October was 20 years. 
So I have just dated myself, but I'll tell you, I started that when I was in kindergarten. So, yeah. Um, and then OS training, I, I bought about four years ago. Uh, it was 10 years old when I bought it. So we have been chugging along. I worked with the owner of OS training for years, and, and so that's it was just kind of a natural progression. I worked in corporate training before I started my agency, so I love training. What are we going to do in here today? I always like to tell you what we're going to talk about. First, I'm going to give you a brief history on AI. I have a little funny thing about that, too. And then we're going to talk about generating text. We're going to talk about images and backgrounds. We're going to talk about CSS, log reporting, things like that. I'm also going to talk a little bit more in depth about some code stuff there. And then uh, some things that you should consider. And as we know, <laughs> we're not just going to go in chat GPT and get something and go, I'm done. That is not the way this works. Um, and so also, again, here's my little robot guy, just so you know what prompt I said, holding a clipboard and countdown clock behind him. So <clears throat> it's interesting what you get from your prompts. And you can also remember AI, you can just keep reiterating on this, adding to it, getting a better result from it. But I do like you to see what I use as prompts for these things. I think it gives you ideas. Now the brief history on AI, by the way, so I went and asked, Chat GPT, give me a history on AI. Oh my goodness gracious. It was, it was so long. Y'all, we'd have been sitting here just slide after slide after slide. So then I'm like, okay, could you please condense this down to the whatever, you know? And so I kept having it condensed down and then I, in the end, condensed it down to what I wanted out of it. So this was generated from the start by AI, but then I went and started narrowing it down. We're not gonna go into all of this, but what I want you to see, because what a lot of people don't think is they're just like, this just popped up last year. No, we have been, 43, okay? 43 is when this actually started. It has been growing since then. It has been inaccessible to a lot of people since then. Then it started becoming accessible to you. You just didn't know it was there because it was built into products. You just didn't know that's what was happening there. It is recent that we actually now have OpenAI and we can go in there and we can do stuff. We can actually use the API and tie it to our own application. So now there is a freedom with it that we haven't had before, an accessibility that's there now for us. <clears throat> So what I want you to see though is I just stopped at 2020 because once we get past 2020, that's where it just went crazy. Like I could just, it would just be like one little notation after another and then this week you could do this and then this week you could do this. So this is where we are, right? We're here. We've been using it a while. What are some of the things you've been using? Speech, I mean, do y'all remember like even on the old IBM clones, we had dragon speech or whatever it was, dragon text or whatever. We've been using AI a long time. Um, the the AI, AI powered chess system, remember when it beat, uh, what was his name? The fame. Yes. I mean, that was, that was big news back in the day when the AI beat him. Um, so we've been using it. Email filtering, my goodness, we, we, we could use even more intelligence in that, couldn't we? So, you know, we've been using this for quite some time. Um, even little Clippy, now this is what I thought was funny, is I went and asked ChatGPT about Clippy, and I was like, hey, what about Clippy? Wasn't he AI? And I like this. Well, he could be considered a basic form of AI. <laughs> I mean, he was just so snooty about Clippy. Why does everybody give Clippy a bad time? I don't know. But, I mean, Clippy was a rudimentary AI. You could ask Clippy things inside of your Word documents. But then he creeped everybody out, and they got rid of him. And then they tried to bring him back, and there was a big revolt. So we have no more Clippy. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things in here, like speeding up, oh, I have to stay close to this. Wait, I have to take it with me. Now I can pretend like I'm a rock star, but I will not sing for you guys because you know, I want people to watch this. Um, so uh, how many times have you guys, if you're building websites for clients, have you been trying to get them to send you the content? It, it, uh, I mean, seriously, right? Yes, it's always the hardest part. The client's like, I need this website. Okay, well, what, what you know, I need a, 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 just an about your company. <laughs> oh, I have to get back to you. Well, like, well, what? Okay. You know, and it's like, oh, your team. Yeah, we need bios. 
I'm going to get back to you. I'm, okay. So you have been dealing with this struggle. If you've ever built a, a website for any client, you've been dealing with this struggle. So what do we do a lot of times? We're like, well, I can't wait on you to give me all this. So I start going ahead, maybe wireframing, maybe even starting to design. But when I'm starting to design, I don't have images from them yet. So I'm just, you know, image holder. And, and then I don't have text from them. So I put Laura Ipsum. And then I present this design to them and they're like, no, no, I wanted it in English. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that, uh, the, and then you have to tell them this whole, that it's not another language. And then, and then you have to go into the whole, you know, history on typography. And so then it just becomes a waste of your time, right? And so what if I could just show something like this? A this is a bakery I'm going to work with. And so I've got a beautiful little lemon cupcake there and a short description of that cupcake. This makes my design look much more fetching to that client. Clients don't have a lot of vision. They'd build it themselves if they did, if they were designers, right? If they were web developers, they'd make their own website. But they're not, and they've come to you. But they, So you have to show them something that they can envision their own stuff into. This also, by the way, will help start speeding up that content from them because you can show them the type of content you're needing. They're not just this vague, they're going to need descriptions. Well, how long, you know, what? And so, you know, and then, and then you're answering a thousand questions and emails from the client. No, I need a short description and I need a long description. And there's just like, oh. So showing them this lets you show them an example of what they need to provide to you without you having to go into very specifics. So you can see this is my little web developer growing old while waiting for the email to come in with their client. And so, and I did claymation style on this, by the way, claymation, AI does claymation perfectly. That's like, to me, it's its sweet spot. It can, it can produce some amazing claymation. All right, so using ChatGPT is what I use. You can also use BARD, but this example was ChatGPT. Um, you want to be very specific. Remember I told you the better your prompts are, the better results you're going to get. So you can see, you want to specify the length that you want it to give you. Because otherwise, if I just ask it open-ended questions, he go, oh, man, I, I don't know why I put a he to chat GPT mm -hmm. and I call Bard a she. I don't know why. I have no idea. But I have uh, just seemed to call them that way. But chat GPT, if you tell it, give me a short description. You can say, give me one sentence description. Give me a three sentence paragraph. Be very specific in what you want. Also, what the purpose of that text is. You can put that into your prompt as well. Like, this is for an about page. So over here on the side, I said, hey, you know, give me, uh, and I think I had the prompt in here in a second, but basically I was like, I need an about page for this company that I'm working with until they get me one. I'm going to put some holder text there, right? And so you can go in and tell it some specifics about it. Like they use, they make homemade uh, recipes. They've had some award-winning recipes. They're third generation family owned. Give it the things that you do know about your client. Put them in there or about your own business if you're doing it for yourself. Put it in there so that it will include that information in what it's going to give back to you. Okay, and then you can also, if it gives you back some information that's like a, like a long list of stuff in the paragraph, take that paragraph back and give it back to it and say, make this a bulleted list. And it will take that, start with the paragraph that needs to give you a bulleted list in there. So you can help it to, to actually format the information for you better as well. So see what information you have, ask it to reformat it, reorganize it. You can tell it to trim it down. You can tell it to make it more formal or more casual. So you can give it a voice. Now, most of this is in ChatGPT 4. 3.5 was not so good with like voices and such that uh, 4 is. 4 can actually even learn. So if you're a writer yourself, let's say you write blog posts, you can feed ChatGPT many of your blog posts and say, this is Robbie Adair's writing. This is another example of Robbie Adair's writing. This is another example. And then I could put in some information and say, put this in the voice of Robbie Adair. And it's going to try to emulate what it saw as my voice that I fed it, right? So it's going to, if I use compound complex sentences, it's going to use those back. If I use simple sentences, it's going to use that back. If I'm, you know, like have some hey y'all colloquialisms because I am from Texas I know y'all never would have guessed it but <laughs> um so you you can tell it to learn your voice um also calculate things for you I mean 
you can tell it to figure out things for you. Like, okay, this business started in 2003. How old is it? And so it can tell you. And it can tell you down to the like month and date and time if you want it to. So it can calculate all of that for you. So you can use this to generate a lot of content. Again, and I will say this many times, not for you to take this and copy and paste and put their company name in there and be done. That is not what this is for. This is for to speed you up to also speed your client up in being able to produce content. You're gonna to want to edit that content. Um, yes, I did. So give me some content of an about page on a, a cupcake company's website. So it's pretty vague in that. I actually think I refined it a little more past that, but um, you can keep asking it to refine that or to shorten it if it was too long or to lengthen if it wasn't long enough in there. Um, now, the other thing that I always suggest, and let me go back here just before I leave this. The other thing I always suggest, because I told you using it to calculate things is very handy, but you can go in there and say, go in and tell me how, how many years and months has Media A Team been in business or OS Training been in business? And it may come back and say, oh, it's been 14 years and two months. And you're like, can you tell me where you found that information? This is so important to learn with any of the AI tools. Can you tell me where you got this information? ChatGPT quite often will come back and go, hmm, well, I can't seem to find anything about that. I think I made it up. Seriously, it has told me that. I think I made this up. I, I went into ChatGPT and asked about one of my client's company to just see what it would find for my client. And it was like, you know, it had some information that was kind of right, and then it had some information that was probably not right. And then it said, and the founder passed away in 1993. I'm like, well, I was just on the phone. No. <laughs> and, uh, so, and then I went to Bard, and I was like, same thing. And it was like, but then, and then it said the founder passed away in like 2007. And I was like, man, I, I'm thinking you better, you know, be, <laughs> go to see the doctor. I don't know. But um, so I was like, so I went back, and I was like, where did you find this information? Why do you think the founder is deceased? thinks for a second and then it comes back and it's like, well, I actually cannot find any information about this, so I think I made that up. I cannot find that they are deceased. And I was just like, wow. I mean, it's pretty it's interesting, but that's also the scary part, right? Is you don't want to take anything for granted that it tells you. Ask it to check itself. Quite often it checks itself and it says, oh, I was, yeah, I was wrong. Sorry, sorry, I just made that up. AI hallucination is a legit thing. It really is. All right. Generating images. This is where I just, it's so fun, but this one to me is even like, it's more of a landmine even than the, the text, right? Text, I can modify it some. I can check it, I can run it through and check for plagiarism. I can run it through. By the way, if you guys don't know about it, you should know about Zero GPT. If you have some information, a lot of the colleges use Zero GPT because it allows them to take some text, run it through there, and it'll give you, oh, this is probably 95% written by AI. So it will tell you, but it's not, it's not always 100% right either, right? So I ran some tests with it. I, I generated some text from ChatGPT. I put it in there. I, from Bard, I put it in there. And it was like, normally it was like, you know, 90% chance this is written. I was like, yeah, you're right. It, it was written by, I just literally copied and pasted it out of there. It was written by. And then I took some of my blogs that I wrote before we had ChatGPT. So it definitely not even was started from that. I, I wrote that. It came out of the back of my mind somewhere. And I put it in there and it said... 10 to 15% chance this might be AI written. Y'all, I am part robot. I always knew it. I always knew it. No, it's, so it's not exactly accurate, but it does help you. And if it hits, I mean, sometimes you put it in there, it's like 99%. It's like, okay, yeah, I probably just really generated that and copied and pasted it. So, um, <clears throat> so with images, you've got, so OpenAI, who does ChatGPT, they also have Dolly. Um, you've got MidJourney, which... I don't know if y'all said MidJourney was all over the news last week because they just came out with their zoom out feature. Amazing. It's basically generative feel that you have in, in Photoshop. So you could have an image and you go zoom out and it zooms out of that, even a created image or a real image that you have, zooms out and it creates the surroundings to match and blend in. And it's pretty crazy what it can do and what it can come up with. You can specify what you want in those or you can just let it try itself. It's pretty amazing. Um, and then Adobe Firefly. Now, Firefly, 
Um, like I said, a lot of these images I did when I was in their beta. It is actually now uh, live, and they've and I'll, I'll, I'm going to try and pull these up at the end to show you a few of these uh, in how they work. Uh, because the Adobe product, they've started releasing extra little things in there, and they've got two or three more that are coming. But if you also are a Photoshop user, this is what Adobe Firefly is what they're incorporating into Photoshop as well. And if you want to try out the new Photoshop AI stuff, go and check that you want the, the beta. It's, it's unbelievable as well. Like, and the best thing to me, I would have to say that that out of these, Dolly Mid Journey and, and the, the Adobe product, personally, I like the Adobe product mainly because when they, remember, this is as smart as we make it. So OpenAI, they let Dolly just go out and consume what it could find on the web, right? And so it's found, you know, paintings, Van Gogh's painting and, and whoever, and it found these. And so whenever you go in and you generate, sometimes it literally, literally even has like the artist's name in this. So there's a lot of copyright issues going on with this. It's, we don't even, we don't even know what all the laws are going to be yet with this. So there's some copyright issues. So, it's, so it makes me kind of nervous sometimes to use those directly, particularly if they're in commercial purposes. I would be very nervous about using those. Whereas Adobe specifically only taught its AI from its own stock art that it had all copyrights to. So if you're inside of Adobe and you're using that, you're staying inside of the Adobe realm. And Adobe has also announced they're taking a next step. And so they're even going to, they're creating a, um, like a script that their people who produce stock photography or stock imagery for them can elect not to be included. And so then it will not allow that to be in the machine learning. And so, so I feel like they're, because they have to, Adobe has to be very careful with copyright. I mean, you know, this is their livelihood, whereas OpenAI, they have a lot going on, so that they're not thinking about this specifically. And Adobe is really taking steps, I feel like, to make this something that we can feel more confident to, to use out there and not that we're gonna get an email going, hey, that's my brother's artist signature on there, so. Um, <clears throat> again, though, prompting, very, very important. Um, style really becomes, uh, you want to be able to give good descriptions of styles for images. Um, you want to give a lot of uh, direction as to what you're looking for, size, for, like a size ratio. I need a square image. I need a uh, 1200 by 500 image. You can be very specific in there and say what you're wanting, what size you're wanting. So that way what you get is usable. Um, you can also do graphic text. I, I did one up there. So I did the word cupcakes and told it to be covered in different frostings, right? And so it'll take that. You can switch fonts. Again, this is in the Adobe Firefly product, and I'll try to show you guys that. Now, the one thing that I really do think is cool about it, and this one I'm not so worried about copyrights as, as much, is repeatable backgrounds. And I don't know how many of you have actually made your own repeatable background. It's a, you know, it's a process. You have to do the copy flip, copy paste flip, and you can make a repeatable background, but this is so much faster and so much easier. Just go, I need a repeatable background of cupcakes. Okay, so now, by the way, which one do y'all like the best out of these four? There's one that's very uniform, right? And the others are not so uniform. Which one do y'all like? Just kind of throw it out there, what you like better bottom bottom left bottom right see i'm a i'm a very structured person i like even numbers i like things to be balanced and so i was a bottom right too but like my graphic designer she would be like oh no these are much better you know it's just more interesting i'm like okay <laughs> But, but so I always think it's interesting because that kind of gives you a feel for the type of designer that you are. A good designer will learn to read their client, though, to know what they will like. So I might would pick another one of these for one of my clients, not because I like it, because I don't, but I know what they like, and I know their aesthetic that they have on their other materials and things like that. All right, so <clears throat> the cupcakes... Did I say what I, yes, I just put icing in there is what I, I did that one with. And this one I said, make a repeatable background of cupcakes. And by the way, all of these I might have generated multiple times, meaning when you go in and you put in a prompt, it gives you three or four images depending on which product you're in. And then you could say, yeah, try again or regenerate. And so it may give me multiples. And so I did not always take the first one it gave me. Sometimes I went through this several times 
letting it c correct itself. And sometimes I would add to my prompt if it wasn't giving me exactly what I was wanting in there. Um, oh, oops, I messed up a little. Well, I messed that up because I was actually testing that this morning and I have to tell you guys that that little um, Chrome extension is not working in Chrome right now. I didn't test it in Figma yet, uh, but in Chrome it's got an error. They'll probably get it fixed quickly. It's a GitHub repository and that link goes to the GitHub. But this is for cutting out images. It's the whole point of this. So this is another really cool feature for AI. And I find that like, like uh, one, of the, the one of our team members, he does all of our CSS work, right? And all of that. But he's not necessarily a designer or a graphic artist. I mean, he has Photoshop, but you know, we probably have to remind him how to turn it on, you know, that kind of stuff. So he doesn't use it that often. But there are some tools now this is a Microsoft tool, by the way, Segment Anything. And if you go to their website, Segment Anything, and I'll try to pull that up in here too, you can take and cut out pieces of images on there. Um, and so you don't have to have a Photoshop or some other type of uh, photo editing software to do this. You can do it right in the browser with this tool. This one even goes a step further, gives you an extension. So you could be on any web page and even cut out something if you want to. I cut out Taylor Swift's photo on a newspaper's website. Um, now, not that you're gonna be going and stealing Photoshop, I mean, uh, stealing photos of other people, but this, again, to speed up our development, you a lot of times your client's gonna send you, you're like, I need pictures of the team for the team page or the executives page. And you've done a nice design where they're cut out and have their name banner underneath them and all that. And they send you these photos where they like took, took somebody in front of this and took a picture and you've got this background or I don't know, you've got the kitchen behind them, whatever. And so you may have to go through the process of cutting these people all out, right? And so this is going to make it super fast. You won't, you, it, it's amazing how fast it is. And I just did a quick clip. I didn't even try to perfect it. I didn't do any of the filtering and the dials that you could do to perfect it. I just went, clip this out and I'll show you how that works. So this would allow you to have more members of your team, if you're a team, be able to do this. Or if you're a, a solo developer, give you the ability to do this without having to buy more expensive products that you might not have. Other things you can do. So again, especially, especially by the way, if you're a, if you are a, a solo designer developer, then you have to know a little bit of everything, right? You have to be a jack of all trades, as it were. And so you may not remember every little thing in CSS, but you then all of a sudden are like, I need to add in some, you know, buttons that have rounded corners, or I want to make this little box to put this content in that has a cutoff left angled corner, things like that. You can go and we can Google this, right? And you can go online, you could probably sort it out and figure it out yourself. Or you can go into something like ChatGPT or Bard and you can say, yes, I'd need a rounded corner button that's orange with white text on it. And voila, it is going to do this for you, okay? It's gonna write that code. Again, you need to know enough about it to know that what it gave you is correct, right? You can also ask it to ask itself if it's correct. You can also cross between ChatGPT and BARD and ask them to check each other. So you can use different tools to check these. The nice thing about it is though, as you're building this, you could then say, oh wait, that one that you just did, can you also add this to it? Oh, can you also do this to it? You can just keep reiterating on that because it's going to remember what you guys were having a conversation about. And so it's going to make it much faster for you because now you're not having to go out and search every time you want to change a little something on this button. You can go in there and say, hey, just change that text again or change this code again to this. Um, the nice thing about it is that not only did it write it for me, but it went in there uh, and explained what it wrote for me, which is nice because that is helping me verify what it gave me is correct, right? I still may need to go and do some more research on this, but I know it's telling me what it did and what it thinks it did. Um, so that's going to, um, one, if you're not good at CSS, this is gonna start teaching you more about it too. So it's not only giving me some code, it's telling you what it gave me, which is letting me learn. Um, another thing that people are starting to use this for, again, this could have memory issues though, we were talking about this, is you could take weblogs in. So, you know, you're having, maybe your client keeps saying, oh, the, the, 
the website is blipping in and out every now and then, or when I'm trying to do this, it does this. Um, and so you can go, and I don't know how many of you have ever dug through web logs. Probably some of you have, and it is tedious. It is so tedious. Your eyes are like bleeding as you're just trying to go through and find, well, they said it was about 11 o'clock last night, and you know, there's so many things that happen in a web log. And so you can actually feed that web log into ChatGPT and say, you know, group this by these type of errors or group this by. And so it can take and, and lower your time. You're really just letting it organize that for you. And so that can save you a lot of time. And it's not something you're having to double check it because it's not like it created anything. It is literally just being a workhorse for you and, and organizing for you. You can even, and by the way, there's a, there's a YouTube video out there. Uh, who did it? Um, you guys will know who it is. Anyway, who did walk through in like an hour, hour and a half video of building a WordPress plugin with ChatGPT. It's pretty amazing. It's not perfect. And what I always say about that too, anytime you're talking about code, you need to know enough about code to know that what it's giving you is right. You can keep checking things, but you will need to go through and uh, make sure, particularly when you're talking code base, that there are no security breaches in it. Because and you can ask ChatGPT to do that same thing. And by the way, it will rewrite code it's just giving you. If you say, oh, I also need this to be secure. Oh, well, you didn't say that. One moment. Prompts. Prompts are very important. Very detailed prompts are very important. Um, so over here, yeah, what I said was write CSS to make an orange rounded corner button with white text on it. Um, and I'll, I'll show you guys uh, some examples of that too, because I went further with that too in a, in a demo. I'll show you that. So, things to consider when using AI, according to ChatGPT. <laughs> actually, it gave me a whole ton of things. I cut down to the things that I actually thought were relevant. Uh, quality and coherence. I mean, uh, coherence-wise, if we're just talking about text, it's actually pretty coherent text. It just not be, may not be accurate text. It could be plagiarized. And this is, you can check your plagiarism several ways. There's a lot of plagiarism checkers out there. Just Google those and you can run your text through there to make sure. Or if you really think, like I had one, I can't remember what it was now, and we had to generate some text. And I was like, that really sounds familiar. Like it was like a slogan or a tagline. I was like, that really sounds familiar. So you know if you go to search Google, as long as you put quotations around what you put in your search, it's going to find only exact matches. And so this is also a very good way to check for plagiarism. So if you see something, just go search Google, put quotes around the whole phrase that you put up there and see if it finds that exact phrase somewhere out there. So you need to check it for plagiarism. I have found where it is pulled almost full sentences from things. Um, it has it has a lot of biases. It's in, in this is a, I mean, OpenAI has said they're trying to correct this. Um, Bard went into it saying that they had uh, guidelines for this, but it's just still not, you're still going to get, like say even like with image generation, if I had just went in there and said, show me a web developer sitting at a computer, like that very first one, I can guarantee you, and this is no offense to white males, but it would have been a white male. Why? It learned from the web. What it saw was stock. There's more stock of web developers as white men. And so it's just what it has learned. So, but if I say, show me a female web developer sitting this, if I said, show me a female of color web developer, you know what I mean? Like you have to be specific and it can do it, but you have to be specific in your prompts. But the fact that it doesn't, when I say that and it throws up four images, why wouldn't I have had one woman thrown in there or one person of color thrown in there? And that's what they're saying. They're trying to work on that. It's so it's, they're also training it to say, Hey, there's more than this out there. And, and that was just one example. There are a lot of examples, particularly in the way that it sees history, because, you know, we wrote history. History is not really what happened. It's what we say happened. And so it's what, that's what it knows as well. The more concerning part for, for me, uh, for working with my clients, and probably for all of you too, for working with clients, is the legal and regulatory compliances. And that's where I said, you've got to be very careful with what you're going to use check it, double check it, triple check it, um, and make sure. And if it is a client, we typically also have them run their content, their web content through their lawyers. I always recommend this to clients. 
Now, whether they do that or not, well, no, sometimes I know they do it because we get back changes from their legal team. But that's a very large client. Your smaller clients, they're like, I don't want to have to go pay $450 an hour for my lawyer to read this. It's expensive, and I get that. Um, but you, you can still make the recommendation to them, and they can make that decision themselves. Now, this I thought was interesting, that ChatGPT thought one of the problems of using AI is that it was a lack of creativity and originality. But I don't think that's true, personally. I have, I have a gripe with that because I'm still the one that's generating that prompt, asking for something that may have never been put together before. I want a female uh, web developer sitting at a computer with a futuristic look to it. I want this there. I want a coffee cup on the side of the table. I, want, I can be very specific in what I want. It's like I'm sketching it, which is still my creativity. So I'm not so sure that I agree with ChatGPT on that. Um, misinformation, that definitely, I've told you my examples. We know that that's a, that is a problem. Uh, manipulation, eh, I don't, again, manipulation is putting some sort of conscience into this AI, and I don't think that that's true. The manipulation is just in what information it got, and that already happened somewhere else. Uh, data privacy, this is a big concern right now. Um, OpenAI had a problem way back when, where they actually might have allowed, there were some sites that weren't secure, and so it was able to access them. And we don't want anybody to be able to go and say, what is Robbie Adair's password to LinkedIn and ChatGPT answer? <laughs> so there are some data privacy issues out there. And I do say, if you are a dev out here, a true coder, and you're making plugins and things like that, you need to be on the watch because there will probably start to be some code you need to add in to block machine learning. So you'll want to stay on top of that as well. And over-dependence on AI. I can't imagine being over-dependent on anything digital. Seriously, y'all. How, who, who has phone anxiety if you realize you got in another room and you don't have your phone on you? Yes, we could probably become over-dependent. I agree. I do agree with ChatGPT on that one. Um, so, But then ChatGPT, ever the helpful ChatGPT, wanted to say, but by the way, here's some things to address those concerns. <laughs> I like when he tries to be very helpful like that. Um, so it's using it as a tool to support and augment human creativity. Yes, exactly, which is what I'm talking about in here, using it as a tool in the job you're already doing, but it is a tool that could speed you up. Could you write some bogus content for your client? Yeah, who has time for that? And I'm not writing that content for them unless I'm getting paid for that content. I'm going to use ChatGPT. I'm going to throw it in. I'm going to say you need to replace all of this content because it's AI generated, but I'm not going to write it for them unless they are paying for me to write it for them, right? Um, and I just don't have the time to sit around doing it for free. Um, you should always review and edit. Yes. Continuously monitor. Yes. Stay updated. All the things that I just said. So I will say it did give me good advice because it was what I said. So <laughs> I thought, well, see, that's that part robot that I have going on there. So basically it is moving very fast. Main thing, stay on top of the copyright laws and the legal laws for this, because that's where we're going to see a lot of changes happening. Um, I do imagine uh, that we're going to also see privacy, uh, privacy text on websites. It's going to have a lot of updates coming up here in the next couple of years, because you'll need to include some information about AI and machine learning and such as that. Um, if you use a service some like Termageddon or something like that, where they are writing your privacy policy, that should be included in there. But if, you, uh, if your clients have legal teams that write those, I would probably tell my clients to start asking their legal team to look over the privacy policies again. All right, we're to questions, but wait, how long did I take? Whoo, I uh, almost took too long. So as, we're, as I'm answering questions for you guys, I'm also gonna pull up some of these tools. So ask me a question, I'm gonna show you some tools. Or I'll just show you two. I've got a question. Okay, question. Generated text from AI, are there any, who owns the results? Again, so this is a very hazy, hazy area. That's why you need to go check for plagiarism. That's the first step. Because if it useful sentences, that may be owned by someone else. 
they don't say that everything we give you back is 100% copyright free. So you're going to need to check it. By the way, though, I will say that some tools, again, this is moving so quickly. I just saw there's a new tool called Reword that's coming out that is actually going to use the API to pull the generative text but then it's also using other APIs to run it against plagiarism checkers too. I know Grammarly's got their new AI out too that's doing the same kind of thing. So it's generating text, it's then grammatically correcting the text or changing tones for you, as well as it runs it through plagiarism checkers. So it's doing a lot of that work for you. Again, they're using AI stacked on top of AI, so it's doing those things for you, which is smart. Um, but I still, you know, I still would be wary even of those, I think I would still, like, I'd want to go check it just to see, to start with anyway. But uh, those are those tools are going to get better and better. So that's a very good question because who owns it? That's that's hazy material right now. We don't know. As well as if people are using ChatGPT in the free version, everything that you are asking about and the text that you're generating and the text that you're manipulating, all of that is going back in to feed the machine the learning of it. And so you if you have the pay for you can opt out of that so why i'm telling you this is don't go in there and say could you please take my trade secrets and make me a word document about this uh, with bulleted lists because guess what you just put your trade secrets into the brain of chat gpt unless you have the paid for version and you go in and you say do not allow i don't want to allow any of my prompts to be used in this training but otherwise, if you don't, anything you go put into those prompts is readable by it, which is even why, and I should have mentioned that, when I did that cupcake company, I said, I didn't give it a name of my cupcake company. I said, a cupcake company. So it then just put insert name here. Because if I had used, and even when, you know, if I was going to write something for one of my clients, I would be careful of what information I did include in there. As long as it's public information, it's okay. It's already out there, right? But I would be very careful. I would not ever go, this is my client's IT security policy. Could you please, uh, you know, create a summary of this? No, don't, unless you've got something where you are blocking that information from going in there. Otherwise, you just fed some possibly uh, private information out there. So be careful of that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this was the one that I showed you guys in there. And then I could then go on and say, oh, wait, could you rewrite that to have a blue outline? Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. So it added my outline in there. And then it explained what it did to add that in there. And then I was like, oh, wait, can you have, uh, now this is, again, prompt, right? I was not smart here. I said, can you rewrite this to have a unique class name? Unique. <laughs> I was like, oh, Robbie, what were you thinking? So I'm like, wait, could you rewrite and make the unique name blue or orange button? And so that's what it did. Um, so it it is very literal. Guys, very literal. So you want to learn to do your prompts uh, very uh, accurately. I want to show you this real quick because I know we're running out of time and if there were any other questions, I'll answer them. I want to show you this because this is more for devs. This is an amazing thing about it. I can say, hey, please explain this React. Now, I did this on purpose, by the way. Please re explain this React code to me like a newbie. Like a newbie is a good phrase to learn, learn because that will always explain and break it down, like a newbie. Um, and so I pasted it in, and it's like, well, first of all, it didn't say dummy, but I kind of <laughs> felt like it did. This is not actually React code. This is PHP pulling in React code. I was like, oh, it's smart. It recognized what the code was, but it wasn't what I told it was. And then it broke it all down and explained it to me like a newbie, right? And then it summarized it, and it's like, this is to integrate a React application. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like, please explain this React code. And I didn't pop it in, so it's like, I'm telling you, you need to put it in. And I said, and suggest a better way to write it if there is one. So I gave it this React code. And it says, this, this is a hook that calls this, and it goes and it breaks it all down. And it says, however, there's potential uh, issue with this code, because this hook is missing a dependency array. I mean, so it is looking at the documentation, right? And it's going, oh, this is a problem. Um, and so it rewrote that React code with that. The other thing is if you have old plugins and you're trying to upgrade them, maybe um, this is something we would use over in the Joomla world too, like Mootools. I have some Mootools code 
they don't support it anymore. Me too was old, right? But I'm saying, okay, could you rewrite this into vanilla JavaScript that will run on PHP 8? And so it's like, sure. And it's like, I can help you with that. And it's kind of, again, like, I mean, really, PHP 8 doesn't matter about this JavaScript runs on the server, but there actually are some things that, that affect it. But anyway, um, so it wrote this, it took my mood tools, converted it to vanilla JavaScript for me, and then explained what it did. So there are some very cool things. By the way, this is also in ChatGPT 4 with the paid version, you have plugins now. You can run three at a time in a conversation. These plugins allow you to do things like access the web. So it's not just up to April 21, 2021, which is where its memory stopped before. Um, now I can actually access the web. Like I can go on to, I don't know if I have one saved in here. I can go on and say, uh, please go and summarize CNN top 10 headlines right now for me. And it can go look at CNN right in this minute and then do that. It also has some things like diagramming. I can say, hey, can you do a diagram of how the Amazon cloud is set up? It's like, here's a simplified diagram for you. And it produces a diagram and gives me a link to be able to go and edit that diagram in the tool that it built it in so that way I could make it prettier because it's not very pretty. And so I could and, and change, make changes to it. So these are some cool things. BARD is very much like it, but it's not as good as ChatGPT. It's just not. It's, it, it's good at certain things, but not everything. It's not very good at the whole uh, code stuff, or not as good as the code stuff. It used to be, but now that they, you have access to the web with ChatGPT, I don't find it is. Segment anything, this is the Microsoft tool I was telling you about. So like, let's say I needed to go in and cut out this little uh, frog. So you can go in and you can say, I'm gonna add a mask onto what I'm looking for. And like, and you kind of have to play around with it to get like, okay, that, that got my, whoops, no. There we go. So I can add to it. And then when I get what I want, I can just say, cut out that object and it'll cut it out. And here's other objects I've cut out. And I can then just paste them into what I want. And then Adobe Firefly, this is text. So this is where I was putting in my text prompt to generate imagery. This one is their new generative fill. It's better inside of Photoshop, but it's not bad in here. So like maybe I want to pull in uh, and say remove a background and put a new background. I can do that in there. And then this is the text effect that I was using in there, just so you guys see where these uh, are. So like we could pick this and we could say, you know, remove this background, and then I could say, uh, create a st stormy background and generate that. Okay, so we'll let that generate. Are there any last questions? Because I know I let y'all go, because I've got another thing coming up pretty soon here. I want to give you break time too. Yes. Um, I saw um, I saw on Twitter somebody uh, somebody uh, addressed or quote unquote addressed the issue of. Uh, ChatGPT generating made up info, uh -huh. and uh, the prompt was something along the lines of, "Don't make anything up, or or no hyper, no uh, no hypotheticals, or anything like or that." Or no hallucinations. Yeah, 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 no yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what it was. Yes. Is that reliable? Is that something that? You See, can... yeah, I don't feel like anything's <laughs> fresh. Nothing. There's nothing I feel like I can say is 100 percent reliable in this yeah. world yet. It's just too fresh and too new. Um, you know, it's just like when we had the first Windows come out and all we kept seeing is the blue screen of death, right? I mean, right now it's just still new and fresh and we're working out the kinks and the bugs on it. It's amazing what all it can do. Uh, I mean, I mean that looks almost as good as the original image that I had there, right? I mean, it's stormy now instead of a nice serene background. Um, inside of Photoshop itself, it does even better because then it casts lighting correctly and stuff like that. Some of the new things that they have coming uh, two, which I think are going to be pretty awesome. And you can use the vector recoloring. If you know how to work with vectors, you don't have to use this tool, but it is kind of cool because you can set a theme. This is my theme color, and then you can just pull in each vector and theme them so they're all look the same. Um, this is the one I'm excited about. This is more, so like when you're doing text to image, you're going, give me a castle on a hill, and it could be any kind of castle, right? But now, they're going to have a 3D to image generation. So I can be more specific. I want four turrets on this. Now make my castle. So it's going to give you a little more control in what is generated. So that's that's really cool. And to me, again, this is our creativity that is doing this. So um, Extend image is actually already inside of Photoshop beta. Uh, so you can go. And that is, by the way, probably a real example they're showing. This was the image. I go in and extend it out. Done. 
we've actually already started using some of this with some of our clients' uh, photos that we took for them of products. Um, we've used it to do quick uh, background cutouts too because it's actually even better than just your magic wand kind of cutouts in there and stuff. So it's, it's pretty impressive. All right, any other questions? Yes. Um, is there a source that you use to track copyright changes? I'm really the one track it up. I, I, and I, and I actually, I should probably put a list of those in here, but if you just go to wherever you listen to your podcast, yeah. I would suggest going in and searching for the podcasts that are on AI, and there are a okay. ton of them, but you can actually put in AI, legal, okay. and, and you'll find some, there are some that are dedicated to talking about this. Okay, I mean, cool. Ad nauseum, probably. To a certain point, like I'm listening to my I was can't, hoping there was maybe a website where they just they're probably, so I can pay attention just yeah. to one thing for a while and not yeah. everything. Yeah, there probably is some websites, and I wouldn't say there's just one. There's probably several websites that are kind of tracking this, um, but I don't know of any authoritative okay. like organization there that I know of yet. But I have a feeling we will have it, just like we have for web accessibility right. and things like right. that. I have a feeling that we will see a governing body organization kind of thing form at some point. But I, I don't know of one myself if there is. Yes. Can you share your like top two podcasts for AI? Yes, hang on. Let me look at my podcast. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you some of the ones that I really like. Uh, that's a good idea. Let's see. Um, okay, so there's one that's called Me, Myself, and AI, which is really cool. Uh, and you actually kind of get some little insider information of things that are coming down the pipe, like they had the um, CEO of uh, Expedia, because you know Expedia bought hotels.com and something else is something else. And she was talking about uh, going through and how they were merging these into a unified system. And I don't know if y'all use any of those, but now they have a pop-up. Now you can unify your account, so you share your rewards across all of them. But they were all done with different database setups and, and code bases. And so they use AI tools to help do all the mapping between all of the database structures and stuff. So that was really, that one was really interesting. And then, hang on, look at my shows here. Um, AI literacy, by the way, I think they just have like one podcast. It was just a thing that kind of taught you about AI at the very beginning. Um, AI in the future of work is a good one. And that's talking about all the ways they're using AI in workplace. Uh, and then, oh, AI, just AI news. That's a really good one, because that one's kind of a short little news brief of changes in there. And then also there's an email that I subscribe to, uh, Too Long Didn't Read, TLDR, mm -hmm. AI version. So if you go, they have lots of different ones, but if you go, they have some that are specifically AI news. That one's great, because it gives me like the top four things every day in my email that's going on. And I find all kinds of cool tools that way. They're just like, this is a new tool that just came out. And you're like, oh, let me go try it. So, nice. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys very much.